Now, if you're new to recursion, be sure to follow this course from lesson one. Now, in this lesson, I want to explain stack frames. First, you need to be really clear about how function calls work. When you call a function, that's any function at all, not just a recursive one, a chunk of memory is set aside to store the local state of that function. And by the state, I mean the values of its local variables, its parameters, and so on. Now, that chunk of memory is called a stack frame. And I'm going to use these index cards here in this video to represent stack frames. Each index card will represent the stack frame, the chunk of memory set aside for the local state of a function when you call it. Now, stack frames will be stacked one on top of the other, just like this stack of cards. OK, so I add a stack frame, and when the function call exits, I remove the stack frame. So get that idea in your mind in order to understand the explanation that follows. Now, let's assume that I've got a function x. I've called function x, and function x then calls function y. Now I add on the stack frame for function y and function y calls function z. I add on that stack frame. So I now have three stack frames, one on top of the other. Or at least you can visualize them as one on top of the other. One of these stack frames stores the local state of the function call x. One stores the state of function call y one stores the state of function call z. When function call z exits, its stack frame is popped off the top of the stack, and the same for function call y, and then we're back into function x. Now, the important thing to know about recursive function calls is that they work just the same way as regular function calls. Now, assuming that I've got here my function x, and instead of calling another function, it calls itself, it calls the function x. So what now happens is that a new frame is added to the top of the stack. Now for the sake of simplicity let's assume that this function x is running and I'm going to call it number one x1. So I refer to this as x1 the first time that the x function starts running. Now it calls itself and another stack frame is added to the top of the stack and I'm going to call that x2 x2, this is the same x function, calls itself, and I'll call that stack frame x3. Okay, so this is the same function, it's always x, it calls itself um, once, and I've called that uh, x2 here, and then it calls itself again, I've called that x3. So that's the state of the stack as we have it. Now, these work just like ordinary function calls. If the function x contains a local variable i, which starts with the value 10, and that's incremented each time the function is called, well, when it calls itself, when x calls itself the first time, i becomes 20, and it calls itself again, i becomes 30. Now, when x3, the, 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 uh, what I'm calling x3, the stack frame x3, is taken or popped off the stack, we go back to the state of x2. That's the stack frame that was added for the first recursive function call to the function x, and that's now 20. That pops off the top of the stack. When that recursive function call exits, we're back to the state of x when it first ran, when i was 10. OK, so this is quite tricky to understand if you're not previously familiar with recursion. So let me summarize what's going on. Without recursion, if function x had called function y and y had called function z and each function had a local variable i, well, it'd be quite easy to understand if you've previous experience with programming that the local value of i in x, y and z could be completely different. They're not the same. They're not interfering with one another because they live in separate chunks of memory, the state of each function call. The same is true, exactly the same uh, is true for recursive function calls. If x calls x calls x, then chunks of memory, stack frames, are still set aside for the local state of each 
function call. So that means that each uh, function call in a recursive function uh, has a separate state and the local variables can have completely separate values and that's ex exactly the same whether the function calls are normal function calls so whether we had the state as originally I described let me show my original index cards x cause y cause z the local states of each function call are separate same thing recursive function calls x uh, calls x calls x again we have three stack frames and the local states so the local value of i that's quite independent uh, of each other function call so bear that in mind stack frames store the state of the function call whether or not those function calls are recursive